A real estate investor reached out to me. This is a 7,000 square foot building that he's got under contract for only 65,000. But before he closes the deal, he needs me to let him know if it's a can't lose opportunity. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to another episode of the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I'm James Wise. This is Holton Wise TV, the show, the place where we help investors like you start, build, and grow your real estate portfolios. Now, this building, set, well, I should probably address the elephant in the room. You might be wondering why the fuck I'm blue. Uh, my man Aaron, the man who's got this property under contract, he called Holton Wise last night. He put this bad boy under contract, and before his contingencies are up, right, he's in a due diligence period, he wanted my take on it, wanted to make sure that this is a screamer of a deal or if there are risks, if it's not really going to be a good deal, he wanted my take before he dropped $65,000. Aaron, smart move out of you. Uh, as the sales team told you over the phone last night, they said, yeah, man, if you bought it last night, I would, since you're in a time crunch, be able to film it for you tomorrow when I got done doing my shoot uh, for the Genie commercial. We had filmed uh, several commercials for Holton Wise TV earlier today. Uh, I was cast uh, in the role of a genie, so uh, here I am, but hey, man, they told you that I'd film this tomorrow, so that's what I'm going to fucking do, blue or not, motherfucker. So here's the deal. Here's the building. 7,000 square feet, and it's got a total rehab on it, right? The, the, the pictures on the MLS are crummy. Uh, you sent me the inspection report, right? It's like 60 pages, uh, more or less with this inspection report. It came to, you know, the revelation, and you, you told me as much, you're like, hey, man, analyze this, assuming we need to do it all, right? Full renovation. Totally renovate this whole whole friggin' building, right? 7,000 square feet. We have four apartments, and we have one commercial space, right? So you want to know what it's going to be to do everything. Get everything rent ready, handle any structural issues, all new mechanicals, electrical, the whole shebang, right? And it was listed at 80,000. You got it under contract at 65K. It's not worth 65k, bro. Uh, it's not worth $65,000, and I'm going to tell you why right after this quick break. <laughs> Welcome back. Now, as I said, it ain't worth 65k, right? And I'm going to tell you why, right? The main issue you have here, right? The address, 949 Lynn Drive, Cleveland, Ohio, 44108. That address is why it ain't worth 65. It ain't worth 55. It ain't worth 45. It ain't worth 35, dog. Now, you might be thinking, right? You're from Seattle, right? So you're probably thinking like, oh, dude, it's 7,000 square feet. It's 65 grand. I can't miss on this. It's a, it's a can't miss opportunity. Unfortunately, bro, that is not the case, right? This property... It's actually pretty much worth nothing, dude. It's it, it, it's basically worthless, right? It's really a crapshoot to try to explain to you exactly what it's worth is. The neighborhood is so rough, but just doing some background on property, what you have to understand is at your price point of 65 k by the time you put this sucker together, I mean, dude, you're looking at probably uh, at least a $200,000 renovation to put a building like that together, right? So that would put you all in at like 265 Is a five-unit apartment building... Uh, well, it technically be four apartments in one commercial space. Is that going to be worth it in this neighborhood? No, not at all, right? Uh, you can get six-unit apartment buildings in much nicer C, B-type neighborhoods. Eh, not B, but like C neighborhoods, right, for like 250 right? This is an F-class neighborhood, right? And this is only five units, not six-unit residential apartments. And with it being five units, uh, four of those residential. Sure, you could probably put some Section 8 tenants in there, probably get like you know, six fifty, maybe seven hundred dollars there, but like, dude, this particular neighborhood, like, there's no scenario where somebody's starting a business over there right now. It's just not happening, right? The neighborhood's totally blighted. As such, sixty five K, dude, that's crazy, right? The seller's strategy here is clearly to find the next asshole, right? You of course are not gonna be that asshole because you're smart. You you pay attention 
you did this. You did the due diligence before you spent 65 grand. If we take a look at the historicals here, somebody just bought this bad boy for $4,000 in 2017. Now, if you guys are paying attention to the market, yeah, in Cleveland, the market in 2021 is a lot more expensive than the market was in 2017. But that doesn't mean this building went from being pretty much worthless to being worth 65K, right? It's just a crapshoot, right? The only time it ever sells is when somebody's just looking for some schmuck who thinks he could do something with it, doesn't do anything with it, and then sells it to a new schmuck for a higher price, right? So this person buys it for 4000 uh, You don't see it on the screen here because it was uh, off market. It must have been like a wholesaler. But this particular person, like six months later, sold it to somebody else for 10000 That person ended up selling it to this person for 27000 right? So the daisy chain continues. You do not want to be the guy holding the bag at sixty-five k. It, it's just nothing good is going on in this neighborhood, brother. Uh it is what I would consider to be a pure F-class neighborhood, one of the most high-risk neighborhoods you can get. And in the show notes below, I have a link to the ultimate guide to grading Cleveland neighborhoods. There I grade all the neighborhoods on an A to F scale, and you'll see that this is an F-class neighborhood. But even without that guide, if, if you just uh, zoom in on the Google Earth here, like it tells you the tale, right? So this is the building right here, okay? Then you got two houses, vacant lot, another two vacant lots, so that's three four uh over here this street five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen right sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty seven twenty eight twenty nine thirty three one two three thirty four thirty five right thirty six seven thirty eight thirty nine forty it's like what is that another forty five or something like that right like 45 vacant lots just surrounding this. And those are not vacant lots where it's an area where developers haven't developed it yet, right? This is an area where there's a bunch of properties that were built like 100 years ago, and they got so dilapidated and they were worth so little uh, that it made more sense for the city to probably just take them back in a tax auction and then just tear them down, right? So for you being an out-of-state investor, right, just from a pure numbers perspective, it doesn't make sense, right? Because the building, the ARV, Right, the after repair value would be far less than your 65k plus the cost it would take to actually get it fully occupied. That's one. Another reason you shouldn't do the deal is because again, if you're going to spend that amount of money, you could just buy yourself a six unit in like a C neighborhood as opposed to an F neighborhood. Right, so uh, it's it's like when you're running away from a bear. Right, you don't have to be faster than the bear. You just have to be faster than the other guy running away from the bear. Right, so uh, even if it was an acceptable deal there's better deals to be had so you would just do those deals instead right so that's another reason another thing is if you were able to somehow get the deal for like 4k right i mean how would you even do the deal what would you do right it's not going to work for you bro because you're a brand new investor right you're from seattle uh this would be your first foray into the cleveland market you've done investing in other areas but not cleveland right the issue that I see out-of-state investors run into when they try to uh, invest in areas like this, big projects like this, right? It's, it's twofold. Number one, it's hard to find contractors working with out-of-state investors to do a project of this scope. They're, they're few and far between. Uh, to answer the question I'm assuming you're asking is, Holton, why is a contractor that would handle a project that large? Yes, we would handle a project that large, but we would not be willing to handle this project for you, which brings me to my second point. As an out-of-state investor, it's already hard to find contractors to handle huge rentals for you, right? On top of that, say you do find them that are willing to do it, reputable property management companies, contractors, they're not going to work in neighborhoods this blighted, this tough, this rough, right? It's it's an area where if I send my staff in there to work on a building, and this is very much a building, you have full staff working on this thing for months on end, right? They got to worry about getting carjacked, getting robbed, uh, their truck being broken into. It's just a neighborhood that the employees don't like going. It, it, it's literally one of the most dangerous neighborhoods uh, in the United States of America, right? So you take your big-name contractors and property management companies, there's just no point for us doing it, right? Like, I can't staff my company with a reasonable turnover rate if I'm making my employees go to neighborhoods like this. The people, they just quit, right? Guys don't like doing work in areas that are this friggin' dangerous. So you take companies like mine and the other big, big, big-name firms, right? We just turn down that work. So if you're an out-of-state investor, you're going to have a hard time finding somebody to do a job just because it's so big. 
you're going to have a really hard time finding somebody reputable to do the job just because it's in this neighborhood. So who does that leave you to work with, right? You're working with uh, unknown people, unlicensed people. It's a crapshoot, right? So, like, you know, your budget, like I said, it's at least a $200,000 rental. But, like, dude, you finding the staff to handle it is going to be a nightmare. After that, finding property management because it's not just construction. It's property management, too. Property managers. My company, the other big firms in the area, don't take on deals in neighborhoods this bad. It doesn't make sense. Again, if I'm sending leasing guys uh, out to these neighborhoods, they're just going to quit. And, uh, you know, I can make money in much easier ways, right, if I could actually have a nice staff, have some human capital here. Uh, but if I'm just having to turn my employees over at a ridiculous rate, it doesn't make any sense for me, right? So for all those reasons, makes no sense, right? It's overpriced. There's better deals out there. Uh, and even if it wasn't overpriced, say you got them to give it to you for like 4K uh, or whatever, right, like free, how, how are you going to put it together? And then after you put it together, what's your ownership experience going to be like? Right? It's super difficult dealing with tenants in neighborhoods this rough, and then it's freaking 10 times harder if you can't hire reasonable staff, and I think you're going to run into that problem. Now, if you're a local guy, like the kind of buyer that should buy this is going to be a local guy. Uh, who probably runs his own construction business and is using his own employees who you need to keep busy, right? I mean, now, at 2021, construction workers are all really busy, but, like, generally speaking, right, if you have a crew and you're a contractor, right, you got X amount of guys working for you hourly, okay? Sometimes you run into lulls in the schedule where you need to keep your guys busy, right? This is like a project that uh, a local contractor who's on top of it can keep his guys busy, and then, as far as property management goes, he'd be doing it himself because you got to be on this building like a hawk. But third party as an out-of-state investor, Investor, again, the big firms, we're not going to deal with it. You got to be a seasoned savage who's dealing with these types of neighborhoods all the time, right? Like uh, in Cleveland, when we do evictions, uh, like when we actually remove the tenant stuff, right? You guys see the tenants from hell videos, right? We always got, you know, our crew out there, they're throwing all the tenants shit in the yard, right? Uh, what you may not have known is is not all of those crew are direct Holton Wise employees. Some of the people that are in those videos are Holton Wise employees. They're wearing the Holton Wise shirts. But if you see, there's usually other guys that aren't wearing Holton Wise shirts. Those are court-appointed movers. When we go out to a property like that, Cleveland makes it so we could change the locks, handle stuff with the bailiffs, but we are not physically allowed to touch the tenant's belongings. We have to hire a separate crew of movers off of a pre-approved list from the Cleveland Housing Court, right? So uh, those are some of those other guys you see, right? So, for example, well, one of the guys who works on a housing crew or who runs the housing crew uh, that has done a lot of evictions for us throughout the years, he is a landlord. He invests in properties like this, and that makes sense, right? He's got a crew of eviction movers, right, that work for him all the time. He needs to keep those guys busy. He understands what it's like dealing with these incredibly high-risk, difficult, tough situations because all he does all day during his, his day job is, is evict people. That's that's it. It's his whole fucking job, right? If you're going to be a real estate investor, evictions are part of your job. If you're going to be a real estate investor in a super risky neighborhood, they're going to be a bigger part of your job. If you're going to be a guy who only does eviction move outs as your job, that's all your job is, and that's all this guy's job is, and that's what he does. So he is like a good candidate for this. You, Aaron, are a terrible candidate for this property. And then one more thing, you were asking me questions about financing. You had asked me if there's any way you'd be able to finance this five-unit building on a residential loan. No, there's no way you'd be able to do that, right? Residential loans, those good 30-year terms, uh, it has to be between one and four units, all residential. So this is twofold. It wouldn't work for two reasons. Number one, it's not going to qualify because there's five units. Number two, it wouldn't qualify even if there's only four units because one of those is commercial. And again, in a neighborhood like this, it's going to be impossible. Who is starting a business right here? First of all, it's residential everywhere, and half the fucking house has got torn down. You'd have to be a complete fucking insane person to think it makes sense to open up your shop right there. So... Uh, I see no path to you making any money on this deal, bro. Uh, you definitely want to exercise your due diligence rights to exit this contract because this one is a dud. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.